Hey there, painting friends. Today I have a special video of how to make beautiful uh, fluid painted glass ornaments. And today I'm using stuff uh, that I have only materials that I've purchased from Walmart. I'm not sponsored by Walmart, uh, but this is a great way to save some money and make a great craft. So you can actually do this for about $15 if you have some of the uh, things on hand already and all of the materials that you need. If you were buying everything from scratch, it would be about $20. So here's what you need. Um, like I said, I bought everything at Walmart. So apple barrel paint, um, that's what I use. It's about 50 cents for a little bottle. So you can buy a lot of it pretty cheap. I have some of the larger bottles, but today I'm using a uh, purple pansy, white, bright red, and this uh, folk art metallic antique gold. So uh, folk art, I think it's packaged by the same people that do Apple Barrel. It's sold at Walmart. Uh, this I think was like 550 because it's metallic and the, the little bottles of a metallic would be $2. So you could get all your paint for like 350 if you're just buying the little bottles. And then the pouring medium is Apple Barrel Pouring Medium. So a uh, 16 ounce thing of it costs $8 at Walmart and that goes a long way. Now the reason we're using Apple Barrel Pouring Medium, it did actually perform the best of several other mediums. So let me just show you really quick why we're using this one. Um, this is an ornament that I painted using Apple Barrel Pouring Medium. And we are pouring on the inside of the ornament, not the outside. So it has this nice, beautiful, shiny glass exterior. But the paint remained really nice. It, it didn't go transparent. Uh, this was using Liquitex Pouring Medium, which is much more expensive. But the paint went all transparent, which surprised me. I, I don't know you can see that but it went all clear like half the paint disappeared and then this uses a another standard fluid painting mixture which is American Floetrol and paint and water and the paint kind of split oh, let me see if I can focus for you yeah the paint split and went kind of transparent too not in the same way as the Liquitex pouring medium but it definitely did not hold its beautiful color and pattern. So Apple Barrel Pouring Medium is the winner when you're pouring on the inside of glass ornaments. And then I also got these, uh, this box of glass ornaments from Walmart. It costs about $3. This is, a this is small ones and it's $14 for $3. I also bought a couple boxes of slightly larger ones. So there's the small size, which is like two inches and then the bigger size, which is, I don't know, two and a half, maybe three inches. And I think there were 10 of these in the box for the same price of $3. And then, so all that's about $15. Your medium, your paints, and your ornaments. And then if you also need some little paper cups, these are three ounce paper cups, some popsicle craft sticks, some paper towels, and a plastic tablecloth or some other drop cloth. So all of those together is only a few dollars. And overall, you're looking at a pretty inexpensive craft. Okay, I got my workspace reset. Um, I've already mixed three of my colors. I've mixed my red, white, and gold, but I wanna show you how I mix it just so I show you the whole process. So I'm using a digital scale which I like to use because uh, it makes paint mixing really easy. You really don't need it for this. I'm only using it kind of so I can tell you what, uh, what amounts I'm using. For using this, uh, I like to eyeball it. Um, so you start with your paint and I'm starting with about an ounce. <laughs> the paint bottles like to squeak at you. So I'm starting with about an ounce of paint, and then you add the pouring medium after that. Okay, that bottle was almost empty to begin with, so let me add a little from a fresh bottle. Okay, 
Okay, so there's about an ounce. And then because Apple Barrel is a pretty thin paint, it's a craft paint, not like a tube paint, um, you don't need much medium to make it flow well. So if, I, if you're using about an ounce of paint, you only need maybe a third of an ounce to a half of an ounce. That's what you should start with, with your pouring medium. So I can watch here on my scale when I hit that point. Uh, so that's four tenths of an ounce, and let's see what consistency it gets to. This purple paint might actually be thicker than the other paints. Okay, so I'll just show you the consistency here, and it's a little dark, sorry about that. But when you pick it up, do you see? Yeah, I'll show you. Do you see how it, it flows, but it kind of just blops off? That's too thick, but it's almost right. So add just a little bit more of the pouring medium. The apple barrel pouring medium is quite thin. So when you're using a very fluid paint like apple barrel paints are, you really don't need much of the medium at all. Okay, let's give that a mix. Okay, so do you see how there it flows off well? It doesn't fall completely back into the paint, but it, uh, the little mound that it makes disappears pretty quickly. Let me show you on the red. That might be easier for you to see the consistency we're getting. Whoops. So you want it to flow easily and just make like a little path across the top of your paint. Okay, so I have my paints mixed, all four colors. And it's time to do some ornaments. I'm going to shift over here to the side of the table so I can give you close-ups as I pour. Um, so with my colors here, I wanted, of course we're making Christmas ornaments, so I'm going to be starting with just a red, white, and gold. And then I'm going to try adding some purple to see how that works. But I'm starting just with these. So take another paper cup, and we it does have to be paper because you're going to be pinching the cup to make a, a small point. So plastic cups are fine for mixing, but for the layering you really do want a paper cup. Um, also, I've got my ornaments just sitting in other little cups. These ones already have paint drippings in them. Um, okay, so... Uh, I'm going to just start layering my paint in this cup. So I'm going to start with some red. And I don't really want my red and white to mix and turn too much to pink. Um, so I'm putting in a lot of red. So then you want to stack it up pretty neatly so you have some defined layers. And I am... I do want my gold to be defined also, so I'm doing kind of lots of red, a little white, fair amount of gold, a little white. Oops. Okay. My white paint is a little bit thinner than the rest, and it's kind of sinking, but it's not totally disappearing. Okay, so I'm only making about half a cup of paint, so there's the nice pretty layers I've got. Let me move these out of the way, and let's pour the first one. I'm going to start with a big one. Also, I have a slight tremor in my left hand, so if you see me shaking, <laughs> it's the tremor. Not, not a concern. Um, okay. So, take your cup, pinch the top, then you're going to take your ornament, and I tilt it slightly. So I can't do it quite at this angle, I have, I have to do it this way. But you tilt it slightly so that you can pour it down and it'll run down one side. <clears throat> so then you pinch it and you pour, and as you pour, you 
uh, turn the ornament in your hand so that you're constantly pouring over new surface area. Once you've covered the whole top edge, go ahead and stop. And wow, that is amazing. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't stay like that. Because of gravity, it kind of pulls the paint and it will end up streakier and not nearly as defined as this. But boy, it's nice. Okay, so there's still some, there's still some gaps. So you can just rotate the ornament I can't show you this whole process because you're looking from above, but you just rotate until all of the edges are covered. Anyway, I've got a nice fully covered ornament, which is looking great. Um, so now you want to turn it upside down in your cup so that the extra paint can run out. Do you see how it's draining? Okay. Let's move on to the next one, because I still have paint in my little cup here. And I'm going to do another big one. So again, angle your ornament, pinch the pouring cup, pour it in, and rotate as you go. Man, that is so pretty. I, I wish they stayed like that. Maybe one day I'll find a, a painting medium that lets them stay like that. Okay, this one actually covered itself completely. I guess I was a little heavy handed with the pouring. Okay, so turn that one upside down and let the extra run out. Um, okay, I've got a little bit more paint in here. I'm going to add just a little bit more white and a little bit more red to this cup. And then I'm going to make a little one and see how that works. And then I'm going to try a mixture with purple and then we'll see. Because I have four big ones and four little ones all lined up and ready to go and I don't know which of them I'm going to use. Okay, so the same same with the little one. Let me get it centered in a good spot for you. Okay, that's very pretty. That's very red which is kind of weird, but there's a lot of pretty patterns on this side, so I think it'll still dry nicely. Turn that one upside down. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, get a clean cup and layer a new mix of paints to try with all of these plus purple. Wow, okay, so that's very purple and red. Oh my goodness, almost completely purple and red. We will see how this dries. I don't know that I'm gonna love this one. Okay, let's turn that upside down. Uh, let's try another one. Maybe the next one will have some more gold and white in it. Wow, I mean, look at that pattern. That is so cool. Okay, I just gotta cover one little spot there. Wow. Well, this one has a lot of gold. And only little stripes of color. Also, the white almost completely disappeared in this. I think it's because, oh wow, look at that swirl on the bottom. Oh, that's amazing. You know, some of that might stay. It won't be as clean as that, but 
That one turned out incredible. Uh, I think for these next two little ones, I'm gonna I'm gonna get out another cup, and I'm gonna do gold, white, and purple. Just that, no red. All right, so let me grab a cup. design my goodness that's spectacular I do like when you're rotating it you often get this swirl some kind of a swirl at the bottom which is neat okay this one had some holes left over but a really pretty swirl so I'm just gonna rotate it around to cover up those holes don't worry if the pattern isn't exa doesn't exactly match. You know, if you've got a window that you're like, where did that come from? Because that is the benefit of it kind of going streaky. You don't get to keep the beautiful jags, but you also don't have awkward patches that got covered later. Well, that looks really pretty. I'll flip that one over. Okay. So that is how you do the actual pouring of the ornaments. Um, so by this point, most of the extra paint has dripped out. So um, at this point, you could, especially the ones that we did first, you could flip them back upright. Because when the top is open, that's when they'll actually dry. When they're upside down, they're stuck in this little bubble where the paint can't completely dry. So you do have to kind of rotate them this way and that. You want them to be face down enough that you don't get a puddle of paint right in the bottom of the ornament, but you also want them to be uh, top up enough that the paint can actually dry. So uh, the day you paint them, I like to do it, I don't know, like 10 minutes down, 10 minutes up, and then maybe, I don't know, an hour or two down, and then an hour or two up, and it's evening here for me, so I'm not gonna keep flipping them. If, if it's convenient to keep flipping them for the first six hours or so, great. If not, just try to put them, you know, down, and then up a bit, and then down a bit, and then um, if you can let them be, uh, you know, top up overnight, that's how they'll dry. Okay, so these ones I did first, which is why I've turned them up. These ones aren't quite ready. They're still dripping. But thank you for joining me. I will show you how they look when they've dried. Okay, it's the next day, and the ornaments are mostly dry. They're not totally dry. Um, so let's look at these patterns. As you can see, the beautiful jaggedy striped pattern did not completely go away but it did go much streakier than it was, which I don't mind. I love the soft kind of blended look of it. So, really cool. Do you see how sparkly that gold is? That's why I like painting on the inside of the glass because the glass just magnifies the sparkle of metallic paints. that big block of red did go a little streakier, so it's not quite so solid. And then the big ones, those turned out great also. Still lots of pattern there, even though it has gone soft. I think that looks great. <laughs> okay, this was the failure. The one that was all purple with just a little bit of red. I don't think I'll be trying to sell that one. But the rest of them turned out really nice. Okay, so the paint inside is still damp. Uh, this paint does take a little bit to cure, so I would say wait at least three days 
if not a week before you put the tops in just because you don't want these uh, little wires scraping the inside of the paint off of the glass before it's fully cured. But after you wait a few days to a week, then put those tops on and you've got finished ornaments. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have great luck making your own ornaments with these easy Walmart materials. Bye, see you next time.